Many people are fascinated with the subject of dinosaurs, but where do they fit into the Bible? Is there evidence that dinosaurs lived recently? Today on Creation Magazine Live, Dinosaurs and the Bible. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. I'm Calvin Smith. And I'm Richard Fangrad. Creation Magazine Live gives Christians a summary of the kind of faith-building information that's found in Creation Magazine. Well, today uh, we've got an interesting topic. Mm -hmm. I think that we, what's the show 13 or something like that. We've been waiting to do this topic uh, for, for a long time. We're going to yep. talk about dinosaurs. That's right. Now, dinosaurs really are fascinating. I mean, everybody loves dinosaurs. I remember growing up, I loved dinosaurs. I still love them. Sure. Yep. And, uh, but many Christians can't figure out, like, where do you put dinosaurs in the Bible? Or where do they fit into real history? Or do they fit into real history? And a lot of Christians, I think, are, are, are you know, kind of nervous about the subject. Uh, you know, do they, do they prove evolution? I think the, the connection between dinosaurs, even just the concept, and the theory of evolution is so strong that, that many Christians are sort of taken aback and they just don't know what to do with it. Right. It's, it's such a strong connection between the theory of evolution and dinosaurs. People feel that since there are dinosaurs, evolution is true. Right. Very interesting. Right. Uh, the common idea is that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago and that nobody's ever seen a live dinosaur. Uh, those ideas are so popular that people in the church have a tough time trying to figure out where dinosaurs fit into the Bible. Right. Now, we see animals today that are kind of similar to what we would think the dinosaurs would like, reptilian like and stuff like that. And, yeah. yeah. But the dinosaurs seem to have a unique physiology, even the way they carried themselves with their legs underneath them and, and so on and so forth. So there might be some clues with that about actually you know, where the dinosaurs went, and, and we're going to look into that. Perhaps their uniqueness was, was one of the reasons that caused their extinction. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that's a possibility that some scientists are looking at. Yeah. The big question is, how do we fit the subject of dinosaurs into the Bible? Right. So God creating recently in six literal days. We've talked about this yes, uh, yes. Uh, on, on, on previous episodes of Creation Magazine Live. How do we fit them into that history without modifying that biblical text? That's what we're going to find out today, so stay tuned. In 1853, archaeologists found a series of 12 tablets dated to around 650 BC, the story of the hero Gilgamesh. The Gilgamesh epic has close parallels to the account of Noah's flood and has led some skeptics to imply that the biblical account is a retelling of the Babylonian legend. However, there are major differences which give clues as to which account is more accurate. In the Gilgamesh epic, the Ark is a cube, a terrible design for rough waters. Noah's Ark was built to be tremendously stable. The Genesis account came first. The Gilgamesh epic is a distortion. For details, search on Gilgamesh at creationontheweb.org. Creation Ministries International staff, many from a wide variety of scientific disciplines, have produced thousands of articles now available in a massive online database. www.creationontheweb.org has grown to become the world's most powerful internet resource on the creation evolution issue. There are more than 5,000 articles already online and new articles are added daily. Some of the topics covered include the feasibility of Noah's Ark and the evidence for a global flood, the age of the earth from both the Bible and science, scientific arguments against the Big Bang and models that explain observations in astronomy within a young earth time frame, recent discoveries that support dinosaurs fitting with biblical history, and many, many more topics. These thousands of articles are available for free 24 hours a day to anyone on earth with an internet connection. One of the main reasons that CMI built this website is to strengthen the faith of Christians. Genesis is one of the most attacked areas of the Bible. Creationontheweb.org 
provides logical, scientifically accurate counterattacks in this area. As 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. Got questions? Get answers at creationontheweb.org. When sequences of DNA which did not appear to code for protein were discovered, some evolutionists suggested that these represented junk or vestigial DNA, leftovers of our supposed evolutionary ancestry. However, researchers the world over are confirming that non-coding DNA holds critical clues to a vast range of diseases. A leading figure in genetics, Professor John Mattox said, the failure to recognize the implications of the non-coding DNA will go down as the biggest mistake in the history of molecular biology. For details, see creationontheweb.com forward slash DNA complex. For all topics, including dinosaurs, Christians should be thinking from a Bible first perspective. So that's what we want to do today. If it really is God's Word, if the right. Bible really is God's Word, then it should be accurate in every area that it touches on. Mm -hmm. It should be accurate when it touches on biology. And we've talked about this in previous episodes of Creation Magazine Live. When the Bible says animals and plants are to reproduce after their kind, the Bible is making a statement there about biology. Right, right. It, it really, it's not about ethics or morality or salvation. It's a biological statement. The Bible should be accurate in that area. That's right. It's interesting as, um, as I'm speaking at, uh, at churches and, and things, I'll often, often ask if I'm asked to do a dinosaur talk, a talk on dinosaurs, I'll say, how many people here have ever had their pastor speak about dinosaurs during one of his sermons? <laughs> and uh, almost universally, no hands go up. You can hear the crickets, right? Yeah. And, uh, and so that kind of tells you something. He tells me something, and I'll even mention it. You know, that's right. We don't talk about dinosaurs. We're the church. We don't, we don't talk about those things. Those are one of those things that uh, it's just kind of makes you nervous and, and people, you know, but we're supposed to have answers. Right. First Peter 3.15, right. always have any, a reason for the, for the hope that you have. And so it, it's interesting. I'll actually start off the talk and I'll say, okay, what we need to do is think from a Bible first perspective. And, 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 and you know, I'll go through the, what the, we call the seven C's of history, you know, kind of like the, the meta narrative. history. That's yeah. right. And I'll start from the beginning and I'll start, get to the end and I'll say, okay, now we want to understand this topic within these, you know, confines. And, and then I'll say, how many people here can name me a prehistoric animal? <laughs> All sorts of hands go up. And then they'll tell me, try, you know, Triceratops and Tyrannodon. Yeah, prehistoric as a definition is something that existed before recorded history. And exactly, and that's what I'll tell them. I'll say, <laughs> now, I just said, this is the beginning of history. In the beginning, God created, and right. this is the consummation. And, 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 and so it's just a way to point out, you need to think biblically. So dinosaurs, thinking biblically, we're thinking about dinosaurs. Now, there are different styles of writing in the Bible. Right. We've talked about this uh, previously as well. But Genesis is written as historical narrative. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's Proverbs, there's poetry, and so on. But when it, where it's written as historical narrative, it is accurate. It is right. the Word of God. So first question, did dinosaurs exist? That's a, that's, you're, la <laughs> you're laughing, I, I, and I know what you're thinking. Yeah. You're thinking that because there are so many Christians who feel that no dinosaurs didn't exist, that's what my pastor told me, right. because th th they're just a ploy of Satan to get us to disbelieve the Bible. Did, did dinosaurs exist? Yes, they existed. We have their fossils. Yeah. We have their bones. Here's a picture of some, uh, uh, some large dinosaur fossils. Do we know what they really looked like? That's another popular question that many people have. Well, I mean, years ago, if, you, if yeah. you read about dinosaurs years ago, uh, there were small bits of bone found, and the reconstructions in museums were often uh, not very accurate right. because of, uh, th there wasn't a whole lot of information there to work with. You'd find little scraps of bone. We've got some replicas here with us today. Yeah, yeah. Find but something like that. The, the reconstructions that we see in museums today, we wouldn't have any disagreement with the great majority of them. What we're seeing in museums... Right. Is, is pretty much the animal that used to exist. Because we can go out. I, I was out on a dinosaur uh, you know, field trip last year, and sure enough, we went out in the Badlands in Alberta, and guess what? We found dinosaur bones. And, and we've found so many of the skeletons now that we can pretty well say, yeah, this is this kind, and this is that kind of stuff. But the key is, it's, it's kind of like I, I, I'll point out with, um, with the concept of kangaroos. If you'd never seen a live kangaroo, and all you'd ever found was the fossils, 
would you ever know that that creature had a pouch and the little joey went inside there and right. uh, that that's the soft material we don't have that we've only got bones there's, from there's limitations to how much right. we can get for example skin color right we, we don't know what what's what color the dinosaurs were right skin texture in some cases has been fossilized right Again, the, the evidence of, of, of very, very rapid burial before advanced decomposition set in, right. which again supports catastrophic ideas like Noah's Flood. So we could ask another question, does God tell us when he made Tyrannosaurus Rex? And I ask this when we, when we go around and speak, yeah. I ask the audience, and you get varying different answers. Well, no, not specifically, but God doesn't tell us when he made cows either. <laughs> but since dinosaurs are land animals, right. the Bible does tell us that land animals and man were made on day six, so we can say it conclusively from the Bible, starting our thinking from that, uh, from that perspective, mm. that dinosaurs lived beside people. Now, I, I've actually experienced this. I was at a Bible study one time, and the topic came up somehow, and, uh, and I remember this lady, and she said, well, I just don't think... God would have created because she she see from what she'd been taught she couldn't picture dinosaurs and people coexisting, and I said, well, why don't you believe that? It says day six, just like you've explained. Well, I don't know. She got all flustered and she said, I just don't think God would create these big you know animals with sharp teeth to be in the Garden of Eden. And I said, well, what about the the lions and the tigers? Oh, she never thought about that because <laughs> she she only ever thought of dinosaurs in a certain context in a in, in a certain way, and so she she struggled with that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's uh, that's another question. I mean, the Bible is an ancient book. We have a very old Bible here sitting in front of us here. Mm -hmm. um, why isn't the word dinosaur mentioned in the Bible? If dinosaurs really did exist right. uh, alongside people right from the beginning, why don't we find the word dinosaur in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, when, you, when you look at the, the first English translation we got. Around uh, 1611, 1611, the King James. That's right. Now, the person who invented the word a dinosaur, Richard Owen, uh, he coined that term in 1841. So it wasn't created, the, the word dinosaur wasn't created till long after our first yeah. English version of the Bible was. So it's kind of like the word email. You don't find that in the Bible. That's a new word. <laughs> right. There's new, new word. words being invented all the time. <laughs> right. And dinosaur is a relatively new word. Right. It's like rocket or locomotive or computer or whatever. Relatively right. new words. So really, when people ask that question, what they're what really you should you should say is, if you were going to uh, use a term that would describe a dinosaur, but you couldn't use the word dinosaur, what would be a good term that would right. do that? And I believe the word dragon would. It, it would be a good uh, a good word to use in place of that. And guess what? There's all kinds of Bible verses that, that use the word dragon. Tanian right. in Hebrew is, is, uh, right. is, is translated dragon. Here in Isaiah, uh, the, the dragons, there you can see in Isaiah. Uh, here another one in Jeremiah, dragons, again, mentioned mm -hmm. there. And uh, here, in, here in Isaiah, once again, the dragon that is in the sea. What, that, what, what could that have been? Right. Uh, here again, the dragons in the waters and so on. So d does that mean that Christians believe in dragons, like, like fire-breathing dragons, like, kind of like this with, uh, uh, you know, uh, fanciful horns and wings and all kinds of things like that or, right. or uh, uh, all these, these fanciful dragons will know but maybe the word as you've already suggested maybe that word dragons is being used in place of where perhaps it should have said dinosaur if the word was invented at that time. Right. Still a huge creature you know with sharp teeth or, or whatever like that, that that you know we'd be scared of I guess and, uh, and so on and so forth. Right, so what did, what did dinosaurs eat originally? That's, that's another question. They had big, sharp teeth, and right. did they eat people initially? Would Adam and Eve have been in danger? <laughs> Running. And you could think of tigers and lions and so on. They had sharp teeth too and so yep. on. Now, now, originally, if we look at the scripture, mm -hmm. start our thinking from there. Bible and first. We've, we've, uh, we've, we've, had this, we've seen this verse before on the show. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. Mm -hmm. So every beast originally ate plants. Ate plants. Originally. Of course, there, there was a change, wasn't there? Right. History moves on and, uh, and, and, and the world is not perfect anymore. It's not, a, there's, there's carnivorous activity. When did that start? Well, that was allowed after the flood. Right. Here in Genesis 9, verse 3, every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And as I gave you the green plants originally, uh, now I give you everything. Right. Now, now God's talking to people. He said, now, before I gave you plants, now you can eat 
meet. But, you know, it, it's like that Bible study I was talking about with that lady. She really had a hard time believing that dinosaurs could coexist with people because they had sharp teeth, etc., etc. She'd been taught they were carnivores. If it's got sharp teeth, it's a carnivore, etc., etc. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, and she... Of course, dinosaurs had sharp teeth. Well, some of them did. Uh, some of them had sharp some teeth. Some of them did. Well, those are the ones we're interested in, right? The, the, the big ones, like Tyrannosaurus Rex. Right, because like you get to make cool here. movies out of them and stuff. So what about the sharp teeth? Do the sharp teeth mean meat-eating? Mm -hmm. Well, um, bears have sharp teeth. Right. Uh, they, they don't necessarily eat meat all the time. In no, fact, they, they, they don't. They'll eat fish now and stuff they'll like eat, that to supplement their diet right. sometimes. Bats, you can't tell what a bat eats uh, based on its teeth. Very sharp teeth. Mm -hmm. Here's an interesting quote from Henry Morris, kind mm -hmm. of the father of the modern creation movement. Yeah, now Morris was describing, uh, trying to, to talk about, you know, how do we know what they did before, did they eat meat or, uh, and such, and he said, whether such structures as fangs and claws were part of their original equipment, or were recessive features which only became dominant due to selection processes later, or were mutational features following the curse, or exactly what must await further research. So we've, we've done further research and there are other suggestions as well since the time that uh, Dr. Morris wrote this. Right. And perhaps originally there was genetic information there that God put there. He foreknew that the world would be cursed. Right. And he put some information there that was then switched on at the time of the curse. Or God just created additional features so that now animals would be able to survive right. in a carnivorous, in a cursed world rather than living in a, in a herbivore only world. Right. We'll be back. If we evolved from apes, why are there still apes today? This common creationist argument misrepresents what evolutionists believe. They don't believe that we descended from apes, but that apes and humans share a common ancestor. When defending our faith, it's important for Christians to clearly understand the arguments we try to refute. A better argument can be made by pointing out that the theory of human evolution requires transitional forms, but not one has stood the test of honest, rigorous investigation. All are best understood to be from either an extinct ape or an extinct human. Creation Ministries International staff, many from a wide variety of scientific disciplines, have produced thousands of articles now available in a massive online database. www.creationontheweb.org has grown to become the world's most powerful internet resource on the creation evolution issue. There are more than 5,000 articles already online and new articles are added daily. Some of the topics covered include the feasibility of Noah's Ark and the evidence for a global flood, the age of the earth from both the Bible and science, scientific arguments against the Big Bang and models that explain observations in astronomy within a young earth time frame, recent discoveries that support dinosaurs fitting with biblical history, and many, many more topics. These thousands of articles are available for free 24 hours a day to anyone on earth with an internet connection. One of the main reasons that CMI built this website is to strengthen the faith of Christians. Genesis is one of the most attacked areas of the Bible. Creationontheweb.org provides logical, scientifically accurate counterattacks in this area. As 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. Got questions? Get answers at creationontheweb dot org welcome back and uh, today on creation magazine live we're talking about dinosaurs a big subject everybody's interested in and uh, some christians are having a challenge trying to figure out how to explain dinosaurs where so, do they fit yeah um, this was a question i used to use actually as an atheist when people would try to witness to me and then they'd want to talk to me about Jesus, of course, and invite me to the youth group or whatever. And I'd, I'd always <laughs> ask them this question. If you believe the Bible, do you believe there were dinosaurs on Noah's Ark? Because there was a story in the Bible, and I knew about Noah's Ark, and I used to make fun of it, of course. And then I'd say, well, how do you get the dinosaurs on the Ark? Right. The and perception is, is that the, the Ark is too small. We have the people, a lot of people have this perception of the Ark being very small. And, of course, dinosaurs are very big. The ones we're interested in anyway. anyway right. the, the many dinosaurs were small. But uh, the, the ones that are cool are the ones that are big. That goes 
jumping around. Yeah, and so I, on. I, you know, you could see, you know, eighty-ton ultrasauruses. <laughs> you know, and how would you get that on a boat? How does that work? Yeah. Well, the the part of the problem is the perception that people have. Right. The are they, they imagine this ark as this bathtub ark, and we've talked about this on a previous show. Uh, the, the ark and the seaworthiness and so on. That was that was fun. Yeah. Here, here's a drawing of what the ark may have looked like and some of the dimensions there, with some of the things that we're familiar with, like a 747 jet. We're not too familiar with dinosaurs, you can see there, but yeah. uh, there, there's there's the ark to scale. It right. was a huge barge, mm -hmm. perfectly capable of carrying two of every land dwelling, air breathing animal, which would have included dinosaurs. So they were on the ark. Right. That's that's yes, but. Dinosaurs uh, come in very small packages. I usually ask uh, uh, the, the, the kids in the audience, how are dinosaurs born? Right. And th they know they're born from eggs. Right. <laughs> there, there are limitations to how large eggs can be. Right. The larger you have an egg, the thicker the shell has to be, but the thicker you make the shell, the more difficult a time the little guy on the inside has getting out. So there are right. limitations to how large it, these it's eggs It's not can like be. the old you know, Ray Harryhausen where you'd eat this huge egg and then a monster would pop out. You can't have an egg that big. Right, as there a are creature. limitations. So yeah. the limitation seems to be around the size of a dinosaur egg. The dinosaur eggs that have been discovered are a little bit bigger than a football. The, the largest dinosaur eggs that have been discovered. So even Brachiosaurus, growing to over 40 feet tall in adulthood, and T. Rex right. weighing many tons and so on, came out of packages this big. Right. So now God said to take two of every animal and seven of some on the ark so that they could repopulate the earth. So what you're saying then is if you've got this, these huge dinosaurs, those would have been the older ones. And so if you're going to repopulate the earth, you're probably not going to take grandma and grandpa uh, on board. You're, you're going to want younger ones. Is that You, you know what? You maybe didn't read that article in Creation Magazine a couple of episodes ago <laughs> because we're, we're, that used to be the common perception that uh, that dinosaurs had this kind of linear growth pattern that right. they, they continued to grow their entire the, their entire life. The older they were, the larger they'd get. Right. But uh, an article written by one of our scientists in Creation Magazine, mm -hmm. the growth looks more like this chart here that it, again it appeared in Creation Magazine. They, they grow more like humans do. We have a growth spurt in right. our in our kind of junior high years. The, the growth starts off very slow. You can see there on the chart, maybe God brought to Noah the animals when they were small before they hit their growth spurt. Right. You can kind of see evidence of how they grow. There's, it's kind of like tree rings in the bones, sort of, right. in a sense. So you can kind of see growth patterns there in, in, in some dinosaurs. Right. So again, just makes sense. Bring small animals to Noah instead of the very big ones. Right. The, 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 there, there are ways that this story will work in very reasonable ways to make it work. Right. And uh, now, if you want more information on it, look up the, the episode we did on natural selection. But when we say two yes. of every kind of animal, we're not talking about, you know, uh, let's say the dog kind, like two chihuahuas and two Great Danes and two Great Pyrenees and stuff. We're just talking about two of the dog kind. And 1,800 kind. different kinds of dinosaurs. Right, right, because we see, you know, Triceratops, we see Styraceosaurus, we see Protoceratops. They all seem to have the base, same basic shape, and then there's variations within that kind. Within a kind. So again, we're not talking. Just like the dog kind today. Right? Right. There's over 650 varieties within the domestic dog kind alone. That's not even wild dogs. Right. But all of those dogs w could be represented by a single pair that got off the ark after the flood. Right. So two dogs, not hundreds and thousands. So what happened to the dinosaurs that weren't on board the ark? Well, they died. They, they, they would have died, right? <laughs> all, all of the, uh, the air-dwelling life that lived on the earth perished at that time, the Bible tells us. And again, we're thinking from a Bible first perspective. It would have died. The, the, the flood was very catastrophic. We've talked about that on previous episodes. Actually, Noah's flood is a great explanation for fossils, isn't it? That's right. There's a great cause and effect relationship there. You, the, the effect is you have a worldwide fossil record. The cause is you have a worldwide global flood. Mm -hmm. Mud flows catastrophically burying animals around the world. There, there have been dinosaur fossils, not just fossils, but dinosaur fossils found on every sing single continent, including Antarctica. Right. It's dinosaur fossils. That's right. So is there evidence that dinosaurs lived recently then? I think that's something that's I get That's the next logical asked. question, isn't it? Right. right. If, if dinosaurs survived the flood on the ark and then they repopulated the species after the flood, mm -hmm. the flood was, was, was what, according to Usher's dating, around 2350 BC, some, somewhere, somewhere around there. there. That's not that long ago. <laughs> so is, that's a legitimate question. Right. Is there evidence that dinosaurs lived recently? There's lots of evidence that dinosaurs lived recently. Yeah. And we'll share some. We, we've got these, these dragon legends. Mm -hmm. right. Cultures now, all over the world 
record in their stories that they've seen some kind of creature that we would call a dragon or a dinosaur if you wanted to use that word and, or, and or people have lived with uh, lived with dinosaurs and so on of course the the oriental the, the chinese uh, uh, history they record these dragons right. that they that they lived with and even used it used as beasts of burden mm. so these are not mythical creatures we're not saying that every single a uh, dragon legend was based on a historical event but some of them were right the, one of the most famous ones is saint george and the dragon uh, here's a mosaic of, of uh, St. George and the Dragon. He's honored all over the world in, in many countries as this great hero right. who went out and saved his village from this menacing dragon. Right. Okay, but that legend is based on an actual historical event. It's not, it, it's, it's not fictitious. It's not a fairy tale. Right. So there really was a St. George. So in the legend, what played the part of the dragon? <laughs> <laughs> right. We, we many people would dragons. say, well, that's just a fictitious story and it just grew and grew and grew. But, why but this do one we is real. Yeah, wh and why do we see t you know similar stories all over the world if it was just that's right, just a, so a there, myth. There, there, there's another evidence that maybe the dragons, and we've mentioned this before, the dragon in that legend was maybe the last of kind of an endangered species of dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the Bible. How, right. how about starting there? We've got this uh, um, this behemoth character described here in Job 40, mm -hmm. and there's other descriptions here which I made as I made you. This is an animal that Job is familiar with, not a mythical creature. Right. He eats grass like an ox. His tail is like a cedar. Right. He can make it like a cedar, like a tree. And right. we're not talking a little cedar, we're talking the cedars of Lebanon. These huge, huge it, trees. It, it could have been big. Mm -hmm. He is first among the works of God, chief right. in the works of God. Whatever this thing is, it was a massive creature. With a massive tail. A massive tail. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Bible commentators and, and the notes in some Bibles suggest that, well, maybe it's an elephant or a hippopotamus. Right, because they're this thinking is, about what we can see today. Right. Not maybe what was there in history. Well, let's 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 see if it fits. We've got some pictures here. It's kind of embarrassing of the back ends of elephants and hippopotamuses. So, you can make up your mind to see if the description of behemoth in Job 40 actually fits with some of these things that we see. <laughs> There's the back ends of elephants. This is this is in Africa. You know what? Their tail is a fly swatter. They use it to get rid of flies. The the next one is of a hippopotamus. And I almost hate uh, hate doing this to to those of you watching. <laughs> kind of disgusting. It's a, it's a little flap of skin. Yeah. I mean, when you look at that, you don't think, wow, there's a massive tree yeah. that's, that's swinging back swinging and forth. like it a just, cedar. <clears throat> it doesn't seem to fit. Maybe Behemoth was a large sauropod dinosaur, chief in the ways of God, a, a, a large animal, something like that. So you can see that even Bible commentators are taking sometimes evolutionized ideas and applying them to a commentary right. based on scripture, not just going from Bible first. Many Christians who say they don't believe in evolution, if you ask them, well, do you have any problem with dinosaurs living millions of years ago? Oh yeah, no, no problem. Right. But it, I mean, the, 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 those evolutionary ideas creep into our thinking because right. it's so pervasive. Here, here's some other evidence of, uh, of dinosaurs. Cave drawings, drawings and carvings, pictographs and petroglyphs on cave walls in the American Southwest. Uh, Fran Barnes is, a, is an authority and, and, uh, uh, with, with this rock art here, not a Christian. There is a petroglyph in Natural Bridges National Monument that bears a striking resemblance to a dinosaur, specifically a brontosaurus with a long tail and neck, small head and all. That's interesting. She's mm -hmm. describing this one here. Right. Hey, here's, here's a fella doing a rubbing of this, uh, of this dinosaur. Right. Well, well, it certainly looks like a dinosaur, right? I mean, what is that? When you look at the picture of whatever that is, it's a carving. I mean, it's not a horse. Yeah, I've, right? I've, I've it's heard. It's not a snake. I've heard some people say when you take the tour, they call that a turtle. <laughs> it's it's a turtle. That's that's a great turtle. But there's there, there's lots lots more evidence of dinosaurs living recently. We'll talk about that in a moment. But how would the American Indians have known what dinosaurs looked like unless they were living with them right. at that time? They weren't museums. To imply that biblical writers were primitive, many people have said that the Bible teaches that the earth is flat. Even though the round shape of our planet was an obvious conclusion when watching ships disappear over the horizon and by observing eclipse shadows, what does the Bible say? The implication of a round earth is seen in the New Testament, where Jesus described his return. In Luke 17, 31, Jesus said, In that day, then in verse 34, in that night, this is an allusion to light on one side of the globe and darkness on the other simultaneously.
In the Old Testament, we read in Isaiah 40, 22, it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Inspired by their creator, the earth shape was well known to biblical writers. Dinosaurs in the Bible. Has anyone ever seen a real live dinosaur? Do dinosaurs prove that the Bible's wrong? What happened to them anyway? Dr. David Catchpole delivers a brilliant illustrated presentation that lets you find out the answers to the most asked questions about dinosaurs and why everyone should know about them. Dr. Catchpole has worked as a plant physiologist and science educator specializing in tropical agriculture and horticulture. As a popular speaker and writer for Creation Ministries International, he has encountered and answered the familiar questions people have about dinosaurs in the Bible numerous times. Did dinosaurs live with man? Did Noah bring dinosaurs aboard Noah's Ark? How old are dinosaur bones? Does the Bible mention dinosaurs? Learn how the Bible reveals answers to these questions. Guaranteed to boost the Christian's faith in God's Word and equip them with answers for their skeptical friends and family. What is happening in the news regarding the creation evolution issue and this, this subject of dinosaurs? Dinosaurs are constantly in the news. Right. And, and so we, we've got a. You, you found something interesting on Fox News. I uh, did. Dinosaurs and evolution and, and, and that kind of thing. You know, it, it's interesting because as you go to different news sites, I usually hit the internet and stuff, but they'll have uh, you know, their science section. And literally every week, you will have multiple stories about dinosaurs they've found and, and, and things like that. And People are fascinated. And, oh, yeah. they're, they're fascinated by the subject, no doubt about it. Um, now, it's interesting again, and we've pointed this out a couple times on our show, how there's the facts, and then there's the interpretation right. of the facts. And so anyway, this was a, a, an interesting story. Let's look at uh, the way they, they describe it. It says, newly discovered horned dinosaur follows evolutionary theory, scientists say. Now, it, uh, the article says, a new dinosaur species was a plant eater with yard-long horns over its eyebrows, suggesting an evolutionary middle step between older dinosaurs with even larger horns and the small horned creatures that followed, experts say. The dinosaur's horns, thick as a human arm, are like those of a triceratops, which came 10 million years later. And then, as you go down below, it says, this makes the newly found creature an intermediate between older forms with larger horns and later small horned relatives, says the state of Utah paleontologist Jim Kirkland. And then he said, um, lo and behold, evolutionary theory actually works. Now, I, I thought this was a great story because here, here's the facts. They found a dinosaur with horns, right? And, and, and you of can a, tell... Of a particular length. Of a particular yeah. length. And now I could, I could, probably most of the viewers, you could, have, you could have probably even said the name of the, of the dinosaur if I just read this. A species, it was a plant eater and it had yard long horns over its eyebrows. I could say that to most kids and they would say, well, Triceratops, right? It sounds like a Triceratops. Most people know what that dinosaur is like. But they call this a new dinosaur. And, and, and so they found Triceratops skulls before with long horns and short horns and this one has medium length horns. And so the cool. whole way they've talked about this is the fact that, well, this is an intermediary step. We've, see, we've had ones with long horns and short horns before, and now we find ones with middle horns, and this is supposedly proving evolution. It's, you found it's it, predicted by evolutionary theory. It's a missing link. But <laughs> if you go out into the, the fields and you see the long horn cows and you see the short horn cows, you can see medium horn cows too. It, it's you know, I'm having a tough time keeping a straight face here. <laughs> um, well, so the know, article is saying we, we've got we we've, we found this medium length me, medium length horned dinosaur, right. and evolution theory predicted that we would find medium right, because because we have long ones and short ones. Right, but see again when we talk about natural selection, obviously we've got dogs that are small and big and medium sized. Well, you know, I was at the. Uh, Tyrell Museum last year in, in Alberta. World-class museum, dinosaurs everywhere, and they had all sorts of different types of dinosaurs that looked like this with, with horns and, and, and right. a big ridge and stuff like I mean, that. What they're, what they're talking about, they, they, they mix natural selection, which we of course agree with, mm -hmm. and uh, we have talked about, talked about that repeatedly, with, with large-scale mo molecules to man, particles to people type of evolution. Right. And so in, in one breath, they're kind, of, they're kind of muddying these two terms together. Right. 
We see variations within kinds, but that's not evolution. And, and, and that's what this is. It's right. variation within a kind, and, uh, and, and here it's, it's written up in the news as evidence for large-scale evolution. Right. So what did you find? Well, I, I, just, I just went to our website, and there was some news there. Uh, that, that just as we record this, this was uh, just a month ago. Right. Um, that I, I like the title that uh, that Sean Doyle gave this article. Uh, article here, Squishosaur, Squishosaur skepticism squashed. Say that uh, five times uh, fast. Yeah, really. <laughs> now, Squishosaur. That's that's. Uh, we're about to talk about that in in just a few minutes. A dinosaur bone was found in a remote area of Montana, and so on. It it, it had soft and squishy material in its bone. Mm. So, uh, unfossilized dinosaur bone. We'll, we'll give you more details in a few moments. This, and that was, that was a, a couple of years ago, that was discovered in March of 2005. Right. Uh, here we are in 2007, uh, just, just recently, they analyzed protein from this same bone that, was, that made the big news splash with right. soft and squishy material two years ago. Now, in the news, they found protein, collagen specifically. Right. And, uh, and in, in the article, Dr. Mary Schweitzer, who's the scientist who, who uh, has been doing this research on, on these fresh di or fresh looking dinosaur bones for right. many years, she's quoted as saying, "We think that perhaps this, this protein, this collagen, could last perhaps a million years, but not back to the age of dinosaurs, which is supposedly 70 million well, years ago. 60, that, that's, that's their story that they're saying that right. the last dinosaur roamed the earth somewhere around 65 million years ago. That's, that's one particular explanation for dinosaurs. Right. There are others like the one we're giving you today. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's just amazing to me that they, they can't see the forest for the trees. <laughs> they went on in the article to explain how similar this collagen is to the collagen found in chickens. And they, and they said, ah, this supports evolutionary theory right. because, the, because dinosaurs then evolved into birds. Wow, we've got support for this dinosaur to bird evolution right. theory. Guys, it, it's not support for anything involving evolution. The bones aren't 65 million years old if there's protein in them. Right. And I mean, it, it, you, you've got this forest of trees and, and it, it just, it, it, it isn't happening. And, and actually, I read that article and didn't it say that the, there was other uh, proteins that it was similar to too? Not just chickens, but what did it say? Newts and frogs and, and, and right. other. But I mean, that's, that's the direction that the article took. Right. Wow, look at this, we have protein that's similar to birds. Right. The, that's not the news. That's not the big the glaringly is. obvious point <laughs> that you've got protein exactly. in supposed dinosaur bones that are supposedly 65, 70 million years old. That's the big news. The news is evolution theory is absolutely wrong about dinosaurs living millions of years ago. Right. Here's, here's what, what we could call, what, what people typically call scientific evidence that dinosaurs lived recently. Right. As, as a matter of fact, if you wanted to, uh, before this was found, before they'd made this discovery, if, if you were having a conversation with someone who believed in the theory of evolution, and you said to them something like, well, what evidence would you accept that would show that dinosaurs right. didn't live? If you could imagine some evidence yeah. what that would, dinosaurs what would you, lived recently. What, you, what? You, could, you can just imagine someone saying, well, you know, if they ever found, like, you know, fresh, unfossilized uh, dinosaur bones with protein in it, then that would really, you know, mess up the theory. Well, right. here we are, and they're not questioning the paradigm of time, because yes. that's a key element in evolutionary theory. If you don't have millions and millions of years, you don't have millions of years to evolve anything. So that's the component that they really can't give up. I mean, we, we don't start our thinking from the evidence and go to the Bible. We start with the Bible. We have a particular view about history. As Christians. That we've accepted as axioms, that we accept as, as presuppositions, as faith, uh, faith positions. Right. Obviously, faith is involved. The evolutionists have a, pr a particular faith position about the history that they believe in, millions of years of evolutionary processes and so on. Right. When you run across evidence like this, which faith position does it fit with W without making all kinds of modifications. Right. I mean, it's, it's just, it, it, it's kind of a no-brainer. I hate to say that, but it really is. Right. Dinosaurs live recently, and science supports that. Jesus, the Creator. Jesus Christ, who walked the earth 2,000 years ago, is also the creator of the universe. Colossians 1.16 says, For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, 
visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. Also in John 1, 3 we read, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Jesus Christ is the Creator God. Not only does Scripture confirm it, but during his earthly ministry, Jesus did things only the Creator God could do. Dragons of the Deep, Ocean Monsters Past and Present An information-packed, illustrated dinosaur book based on the authority of the Bible. People of all ages are fascinated with dinosaurs and have many questions about them. Sixteen spectacular sea giants, including the best candidate for Leviathan, feature in this stunningly illustrated book. Mighty predators like Liopleurodon and the lesser-known sea serpent Styxosaurus probably inspired tales of sea dragons before they became extinct. The whale-resting colossal squid was thought to be mythical until its recent live discovery. Fantastic creatures and fascinating facts impart a thoroughly biblical worldview. Well, we're back and we're talking about dinosaurs today and uh, how, we, how we understand those things in context of what the Bible says and the and the real history that's uh, that's revealed in the Bible. Yeah, we've, you know, we've kind of looked at kind of what the Bible says about dinosaurs. The, the, the Bible describes a recent history or mm -hmm. or a more recent history than the, than the popular evolutionary history. Right. And that dinosaurs were created on day six, and originally they ate plants, and later they they, they may have started eating meat and so on. So there's the biblical perspective. Yeah. And and then we've also started talking about some scientific evidences. Right. For the recent existence of dinosaurs. And there have been a number of evidences that would support a younger Earth uh, and a young uh, age for dinosaurs, um, directly from dinosaur bones, and you can find it even in secular, uh, secular writings. As a matter of sure. fact, we've got a quote right here. This is from uh, uh, Philip Curry, and uh, he says this in his book, 101 Questions About Dinosaurs. He says, a more spectacular example was found on the north slope of Alaska, where many thousands of bones lack any significant degree of permineralization. The bones look and feel like old cow bones, and the discoverers of the site did not report it for 20 years because they assumed that they were bison, not dinosaur bones. I mean, what, a, what a fascinating story. First of all, you've got unfossilized dinosaur bones. That right. in itself, you, you could just stop there and say, wow, that's un how could bones right. last unfossilized for 65 million years, laying around in Alaska? Right. For example, um, there were a lot of buffalo on the North American plains uh, when you know when people came from Europe and they shot a lot of them and would just leave their carcasses there yeah. and you 60 know what million are, are some of the estimates 60 yeah. million buffalo and we don't find a lot of bones from those creatures because they just decay and they get I mean we know what happens to them so to find like you said unfossilized dinosaur bones supposedly 65 at least million years ago that's pretty staggering. So according to Dr. Curry, I mean, the, the, the discoverers thought that they were bison, that right. they were kind of the American buffalo, the bison. Right, because it had to be something that lived fairly recently. Because they were fresh. Right. It, it would, so they, they, they didn't think it was dinosaurs. When the bones were more closely analyzed, it's right. discovered that these bones are dinosaur bones. Yeah. Again, there's another powerful evidence that dinosaurs lived recently. Right. Uh, here's another one. Uh, this, this picture here, what you're looking at, you can see here in the center, these dark circles those are actually red blood cells inside a thin slice of unfossilized Tyrannosaurus rex leg bone. Yeah. And we wrote this up in our Creation magazine. This is the kind of information that, that in summary form, we're kind of delivering on this show. Right. But the details are really in Creation magazine. We can only do so much in, in, the, in the segments that we have on the show. The details are really in the magazine. So a lot of the information that you're hearing here, we're just getting from Creation magazine and relaying it here on the show. Mm -hmm. Blood cells. Inside unfossilized so now now it's not only unfossilized right now there's blood cells inside the dinosaur bone right and apparently all kinds of tests were done and 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 and, uh, and, and scientists were saying well no these aren't really red blood cells and but they've they've done tests on these chemical tests and so right. on and they are red blood cells and what are you going to do with that if you believe dinosaurs lived millions of years ago I remember when the very first report of of, of them finding you know red blood blood cells and soft tissue came out and this was a while ago now. Um, and, and, of course, many evolutionists were saying, no, 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 that can't be right, and, and they were trying to downplay it and stuff like that. And then w we found many, um, there were many Christian um, 
you know, ministries that believe in millions of years and, and so on and so forth. So that doesn't fit in with the paradigm either. Many Christians were, were arguing and saying, no, 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 and, and they were following the same type of bandwagon. But, you know, it's interesting to see the, the reports come out. And now, of course, like we mentioned on the, in the news section, we can find protein. It, it just keeps getting worse and worse. Our, the case for dinosaurs, you know, existing just a short while ago is just increasing in, in, in weight. That's right. We need to give the backstory to that to that protein that we yep. just that was just the in the in the news section there very recently. Right. Uh, a number of years ago, a, a new Tyrannosaurus rex was discovered in Montana, a very remote area of Montana. It was so remote that there was no roads going there. They had to fly the bits out by helicopter. And when they did that, the, the femur, the large leg bone of the dinosaur, it was too big for the helicopter, so they broke it in half. When they did that, they discovered that the interior parts of the bone had not yet fossilized. So now we've got, here's another example, uh, again, of unfossilized dinosaur bone. Yeah. When, the, uh, w when this, this bone was brought back to the lab, uh, Dr. Mary Schweitzer, again, the same, the same scientist who found the red blood cells and, and other things previous to that, mm -hmm. she found soft tissue inside the Tyrannosaurus rex bone. This was right. written up, this was in Science Magazine, March 25th, 2005. It made headlines around the world. Yep. And, uh, and, and, and just fascinating. So, so this is what she found. You can see this here uh, in, in the bottom left there. That is, uh, you guessed it, that's a blood vessel. And on higher magnification, what do those look like on, on the right hand, lower right-hand picture there? Yep. They certainly look like red blood cells. I, I remember seeing the live interview uh, you know, on, on one of the news channels. And uh, she was standing there. And, uh, and, and the newscasters that were asking her questions, I remember one of them going, so that's a 70 million years old. <laughs> and she wasn't being rude, but she, you could tell it was, it was stretching you know, the limits of, of, of what she could believe. And, um, and, and, and even Mary Schweitzer, I, I hear, said she, she checked it 17 times before she could believe her eyes <laughs> and believe what she was that's saying. Right. Do it again and do it again and right. do it again. Because such is the belief in millions of years and the dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. She knew what this evidence was showing. It, yes. Of course, it yeah. stretched uh, your imagination to believe it could be 70 yeah, years I guess old. Yeah, I guess you weren't intending to make a pun there, but if, if you look at this picture again in the upper left-hand corner, that those pictures were taken by Dr. Schweitzer, <laughs> there's a little black arrow pointing to a white piece of material there. That is actually stretchy material. Right. It's, it's soft and stretchy like a rubber band. She, she said you could stretch it and it would return to shape. Right. That's how fresh it is inside the dinosaur right. bone. They, they hydrated the, 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 the inside to, to see what was in there. Yes. But you could actually right. pull it apart and, and it would sort of snap back into place. It's interesting. And we had on our website, this is, this is part of what our website is all about, our scientific staff, our speakers will write articles that comment on these kinds of news articles. And when right. something this big hits the news, Within 24 hours, uh, one of our folks on staff, yep. Dr. Carl Whelan, he had an article up on our website, uh, and, and, and we called it later on, we called it Squishosaurus. There's soft, <laughs> still soft and squishy bits yep. inside the dinosaur bone. What's, what's, what's remarkable is that uh, another Christian ministry called Reasons to Believe looked at this evidence, and, and they're a ministry that, that is, is, is very, very committed to the millions of years right. philosophy, the whole millions of years. Uh, God didn't create in six days. He did it over millions of years. This, and we've, we've, we've talked in detail about this on right. previous episodes. They actually looked at this evidence and looked at the article on our website and, and, and where, where we just announced, wow, powerful uh, evidence, uh, evidence, for, evidence young earth. Yep. for what the Bible is saying, young earth and so on, dinosaurs living beside people and so on. And here's a Christian ministry that's, that's trying to refute that. Right. I, I, I just found how interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, squirming at Squishosaur is, uh, is the article which we then wrote to rebut their claims right. that it really is 65 million years old <laughs> and something is going on there. Yeah. So there's, uh, there, there's, there's a web link. You can look at that. It ma makes for interesting reading. Right. Here, here's a, a Christian ministry that believes in millions of years is attempting to debunk clear evidence that dinosaurs lived recently, or some scientific evidence, we could call it scientific, that dinosaurs lived recently. Yep. Creation on the web.org slash squishosaur. You can read the arguments there. A another article that came up at, uh, subsequent to this, uh, to this discovery, and we, we, we had a little, little section in Creation Magazine where we talked about this, is, a, is an article from Discover Magazine, which right. is, of course, heavily evolutionary. 
And uh, the, the title of the article was called Schweitzer's Dangerous Discovery. Dangerous. Dangerous Discovery. Why was it dangerous? It dangerous to she, the theory of evolution. She <laughs> blurred the lines about where dinosaurs fit in with history and evolution. She was Schweitzer's Dangerous Discovery. And, uh, and you, you can read about that creationontheweb.org slash schweit, and we'll, we'll put that up on the screen as well. There's the Discover article, it, it went on to document the unwillingness of many in the scientific community to believe these findings. Like just and believe that they even found them. To, to believe that she, they even found them. Uh, uh, Dr. Schweitzer writes this, I had one reviewer, she's trying to get papers published here, she sends them out to reviewers for, for, to get them published. I had one reviewer tell me that he didn't care what the data said. He knew that what I was finding wasn't possible, <laughs> said Schweitzer. I wrote back and said, well, what data would convince you? And he said, none. So powerful is this evolutionary idea that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago right. that even when presented with data like soft and squishy material inside the dinosaur bone, right. it, it just doesn't work. Lots of evidence for dinosaurs living recently, and lots more on our website. Many Christians are convinced that scientists have proven that the universe is billions of years old. In Genesis 1, we learn that God created the heavens, the earth, and all they contain in six days. It's plain to see that the word day in Genesis 1 clearly means a literal 24-hour day. The Hebrew word for day is used more than 2,300 times throughout the Old Testament, but its meaning is only questioned in Genesis. Why? Because the idea of millions of years is so ingrained in our society today. Each issue of Creation Magazine contains articles by scientists refuting the millions of years and supporting a recent creation in six real days, just like the Bible says. Finding answers to questions about the origins debate, creation or evolution. When the results are in, which one is supported by scientific observations? Find out at creationontheweb.org. Creation scientists and researchers from around the world have contributed more than 5,000 articles, many of which appeared in leading creationist publications like Creation Magazine and the Journal of Creation over more than 30 years. A new daily front page article keeps web visitors informed about the latest breaking news in the creation evolution debate. When news breaks about the latest evolutionary ape man or some major supposed evidence for evolution, Check out creationontheweb.org for a Christian creationist response. Each weekend, the website features a feedback article, a response to web visitors' email feedback. Often, the anti-creationist arguments in skeptics' emails are refuted in a detailed response by a CMI staff member. So in a very practical way, believers can see that the Bible, and particularly Genesis, can be defended against skeptics' arguments. The website includes an online store where you can browse through hundreds of the world's leading creationist books, DVDs, and related materials, all available to build up the faith of the believer. Got questions? Get answers at creationontheweb.org. We love to get feedback through the web, through the through the telephone, through letters, and so on. Uh, but before we get some feed to get to some feedback about dinosaurs, Cal, you had a thought just before we uh, uh, we broke about Dr. Right. Silvestru, and, and I've heard him say this as well. <laughs> well, we were talking about um, evidence that you're willing to accept, and, and, and right. we were talking about how the paradigm of millions of years and, and, and how people you know couldn't believe we find unfossilized you know f uh, dinosaur bone and stuff like that. And Dr. Silvestru was talking to me one time about. Um, speaking to a friend of his that was an evolutionist. And uh, they were talking about, well, what evidence would you accept that would show that evolution w wasn't true? And the fellow said to him, um, well, if you would find a human footprint inside of a dinosaur footprint, that would be evidence um, of humans and dinosaurs coexisting, in it, and so that would disprove evolution. Well, I guess it was a couple of years later where there was 
um, some controversy surrounding a footprint and it looked like the very same thing that they had been talking about. Now that turned out to not be true. There, it was not a human footprint in a dinosaur right, the footprint. the Paloxy River and that kind of thing. Right. Yep. But during that time, because it was, it was being investigated and there was a possibility, it looked like, hey, maybe this is evidence, um, they were discussing this again. And I guess uh, Dr. Silvestri said, well, if this proves to be the case, remember what you said. And the fellow said, well, I've been thinking about that. And he said, if we did find a human footprint in a dinosaur uh, footprint, that would prove time travel is possible. And so again, it, you know, you don't change the prime axiom that there's millions of years yes. and, and, and you know, it doesn't matter what the facts show or what the evidence shows. Somehow we'll make them fit. We've got a faith position, in they've got a faith position, yep. and it's not just the facts. Or they have a position. They have a faith position about millions of years, often again. It's not science versus religion, right. it's faith versus faith. One history versus another, another history. history. Both yeah. of them are accepted by faith. Yeah. So now we do get questions. You know, we're, we're gonna go to a feedback we get here, but I get feedback during speaking engagements, and I know you do yes. too, yep. and, and I think the one big question we get a lot is, well, why don't we find, you know, uh, not just footprints, why don't we find human bones with dinosaur bones if they existed together? Right. So, so what's, what's the answer to that one? Well, we have to understand the nature of the fossil record, partially. Vertebrate animals, which would include dinosaurs and man, account right. for 0.0125% of the fossil record. An extremely small, <laughs> small amount of the fossil record. So there may be human and dinosaur fossils existing somewhere. Right. We just haven't discovered them because, th th again, an extremely small portion. But, but also consider this, the coelacanth. This is a fish, right. it gro grows to a fairly large size. And uh, this, this apparently, according to evolutionary dating methods, it went extinct some 65 million years ago, right around the time that they say the dinosaurs went extinct. Right. And there, there have been no fossils found in rock, they say, that is, that is younger than that. Uh, there's a problem, however. The fish was found alive and well swimming off the coast of South Africa in 1938. Right. People were diving there and they, they, and they found this fish. Nowadays, apparently, they eat it in India. Right. So the fish is alive and well, and yet you don't find coelacanth fossils buried with human fossils either. Right. Now, the, the evolutionists would say this is a creature that has uh, entered evolutionary stasis for 65 million years. It means there's no evolution. Well, there's another, that's another problem as well, but the, and getting to this whole dinosaur and human fossils, how yeah. come there aren't there? Well, there are all kinds of animals that, have, according to the evolutionary story, they went extinct millions of years ago, the fossils don't appear beside humans, and then they find them alive today. Right. Obviously, humans are alive, and if those creatures are alive, we don't find their fossils. It doesn't mean that people right. and dinosaurs didn't live together. Right. We've got all kinds of other evidence, some of which we've just mentioned, that dinosaurs lived very, very recently. Right. If we were to one day find, and I, I, I hope we will, don't know if we will, but uh, if we one day find human and fossil uh, evidence, uh, human and fossils together, that would be one more evidence in addition to the evidences that we already have. Right. So there's another feedback here. This one is, uh, is uh, via our website. I'll just read, it's, it's just a short feedback. I'll read that. Let me get clear about your beliefs. How old do you believe that the Earth is? And how do you debunk carbon dating? Dinosaur bones have been dated based on the half-life of certain elements at millions of years. <laughs> the earliest human remains found are nowhere near that old. Also in the Bible, there is no reference to dinosaurs. I would think that a creature of such threat to life and sheer size would be mentioned at least in passing. Perhaps I'm not familiar with the passage that clearly describes man walking amongst dinosaurs. So again, here's a feedback. Right. They haven't we've checked out our website. They haven't seen no. the evidence we've, we've presented. Well, in the last hour, we've, we've presented a number of things that, that answer all these questions. Right. Um, carbon dating, we've done on another show, but carbon dating, of course, has nothing to do with millions of years. Uh, right. Perhaps this individual didn't know that. But again, you can read this feedback on the website. Well, it's interesting. You see, it's, it's a little bit of information. He mentioned half-lives, but he says he uses carbon dating as, as millions of years. That method won't date millions of years. So no. he's got a little bit of knowledge, and he's throwing it out there, but... He really doesn't right. know his But stuff. again, here's a perception from someone who wrote in. This is, this is a fellow from the USA who wrote in. And again, there's that perception out there. You can't fit dinosaurs with a Bible. Right. Because there's all this baggage that comes along with dinosaurs. They lived millions of years ago. And as he says, no one's ever seen a live dinosaur. No, nobody li has lived beside dinosaurs. Where's the Bible passage? Well, it's, it, it's in Genesis 1 right there where it says land animals and man were created on day six. Right. You know what? When we look at science... 
And when we look at the world around us, when we see some of this evidence, it fits with what the Bible says. It's a great time to be a Christian, mm. and especially with this subject of dinosaurs. It's so fascinating, and they fit with the Bible. <laughs>